Hi, Maggie Harding here today for Eileen Hall Designs, and I'm going to show you how to make a shaker trinket box. We'll be using this scoreboard XL die from Sizzix, and I have used an older Graphic 45 Christmas Collection, St. Nicholas. So let me show you the pieces that you're going to need to cut. And I'll give you a few tricks too. Okay, I am using Sizzix Little Sizzles Mat Board. And I'm using Eileen Hall by ThermaWeb Easy Cut Adhesive. And I'm using foam adhesive sheets. So let me tell you each of the parts. Okay, first of all, you are going to die cut just from paper a frame. So on the die, that would be this part right here. Then from some clear uh, plastic, you can use plastic packaging or you can buy this clear stuff. You're going to you cut, come on out of there. You're going to cut one of these, a clear piece. Then don't pay any attention that there's paper on the back of that. That was a boo-boo, but I'm still going to be able to use it. Then you're going to cut just a piece of mat board with the um, oval cut out. That's the next thing in our uh, shaker sandwich. And then you're going to adhere a piece of foam adhesive to a piece of mat board and cut another frame. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's foam on the top and on the bottom there's mat board. So that's going to go under there like so. And then finally you're going to cut a solid piece, which is going to be the back of the shaker. So that's going to go together all like this and there'll be beads inside. So let me show you the sandwich one more time. Okay, we have a, oops, I got the frame, got it put together wrong. There we go. We have a piece of a frame just cut from paper. We have a clear adhesive sheet. Uh, I'm sorry, not an adhesive sheet, a clear acetate panel. And this is clear once I peel all the blue paper off of it. I keep the paper on until the last minute so that dust and so on doesn't adhere to it. Then we have a piece of mat board cut out. Again, ignore the paper on the back. It doesn't need to be there. Then we have a piece of foam adhesive attached to a piece of mat board. And that goes there. And then we have a plain panel. And that will make up our shaker. So now let's put this thing together. First thing I'm going to do is glue the acetate panel onto this. When you glue it, make sure you get a good tight seal all around because if you don't your shakers will leak out and you don't want that to happen another thing too is let everything dry good before you put your shakers in it okay then you want to set that aside and let that dry okay so now let's build the rest of our layers and i'll start from the bottom on this part so you're going to start with this and then you're going to put the um, mat board, just the plain mat board piece on next. Then you're going to put the mat board piece with the foam adhesive on it. The foam adhesive goes up. Now, one thing you should do that I did not do, and you can tell it from this little extra piece in here, should once you have positioned this piece in your die, go ahead and cut all of these pieces and try really hard not to move this so that they will all line up perfectly. Okay. So there we go. Then this is going to fit over top. And I let the uh, little inner part die cut out and that's going to fit over there like so okay so now it's time to 
fill the center with our shakers and put the top on. So I've just gotten the very end positioned where I want it. And I've got a little bag of shaker material here. I'm just going to sprinkle a few things in there. You don't need a lot. And then I'm going to go ahead and press this down. The shaker mix is from Buttons Galore. They have lots of really nice um, collections of various shaker material. Now, so that looks pretty good. We got a little bit of white showing there, but we'll fix that, no problem. Remember, flowers, I'm the flower girl. Put a few flowers down there, nobody will ever see it. Look at that, isn't that cute? Okay, so now let me give you a few little tips here. When you are putting your easy cut adhesive on it, I have found that it is easier to put the adhesive on the paper and then peel off the other side of the adhesive and adhesive to adhere it to your uh, mat board. And the reason for that is, is I have found that when I put the adhesive on the mat board and then I try to peel off the um, backing, it tends to pull up the face of the mat board. So I, f I find it a little easier to put it on the paper and then onto the mat board. Also, when you are die cutting, be sure that you put your paper side that you want on the front down, down like this. Now, sometimes we're die cutting things that are covered on both sides. And if you, this one, it wouldn't matter because the sides are the same, but what if you had one pattern on one side and one side on the other, and you definitely wanted one to be on the outside, make sure you always put the outside face down. When you're die cutting the plane uh, with, without the oval cut out, use these little things that come with Tim Holtz's dies, oh, the movers and shakers movers and shapers <laughs> that'll keep the paper from getting pushed down now if you don't have one of these you don't need to stress out you just fill the center with something that will keep up that's about as thick maybe a little bit thicker um, if you have some foam pieces you could ad adhere some foam pieces together in the center so that the paper doesn't push down okay now let's assemble the rest of the box um, I've gone ahead and die cut everything, so you need two of these. These are the sides around the box. You need one of these. This is um, this part right here. You need one of these, and that is the bottom of the box. And you need one of these. This is the inside of the box. I am using a red tape liner. This is an Eileen product manufactured by Thermal Web. This is really good stuff. It's strong. Some people don't like it because it has to be cut rather than ripping. Yeah, that's a little bit of, of an annoyance, I suppose, but it holds so well that it, it's well, well worth it. So I've gone ahead and put the tape on here. Okay, another thing you might want to do is ink the cracks. You can certainly use ink this way. What I like to use is a big brush pen and very carefully color that. Mind you, it, you have to be careful. You have to have a steady hand because one slip and you're going to have ink on your paper but you know that's just a little bit it's not a big deal right so first let's put our sides together burnish that down really well and then let's put this other side together
Okay, now let's attach our spine. That is going to go here like so. And the edge should meet up with the edge of the box. going to do something a little differently here. Normally this would fit right here, okay? I don't really like this thickness that's here, so I am going to take my craft knife and I am going to cut this one side off. Now let's see how that's going to work. need to adjust the corner just a little bit so that it'll fit. And I want to position this right on the fold. My inside, my inside fell out. Let's put the inside back in to help hold it square and press. Take the floor back up. I just had another idea. Okay, now make this really fit down there nicely, I'm going to put a floor in the middle with a little bit of this scrap mat board that I have. So it needs to be about two and a quarter by three and a quarter looks like. We want to attach the top. And it's going to go on this first um, flap here. Okay, there is your checkbox, your basic assembly. I think that's cute. Now you can add some other embellishments like whatever you like and it'll be all finished. So I will show you some pictures of the box after I finish adding my own personal touches to it. Thanks for watching.